The number one thing you need to be doing to not die on your motorcycle is to cover your front brake and to learn how to use your front brake. I see so many riders who are not covering the front brake and don't really know how much pressure they can add to the front brake to really slow the vehicle down. And that's just gonna cause a lot of problems if you don't know how to do both those things effectively. Let me explain. If you're not covering the front brake, your reaction time to go and grab the front brake is increasing right and we want to reduce the reaction time as much as possible when you're riding a motorcycle because let's say you're traveling at 60 miles per hour and you need to very quickly apply the apply the front brakes if you go for those front brakes from open throttle to whoop, on the front brake that's at least 10 or 15 feet you've lost of closing distance right if you already have your finger prepared at the lever and then you what you see what's happening and you know how to progressively add pressure and squeeze 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 then you're already going to be so much better off than the rider who has you know twin disc brembos and all this cool stuff it doesn't matter what hardware you have for your brakes if you don't know how to use it learning how to use your front brake is the number one way to avoid injury accident and ultimately death on your motorcycle because if you can stop yourself or reduce your speed as you're about to impact an object you will massively increase your chance of not getting super injured or getting a life-altering injury or in the worst case scenario death because that leads me to my second point the other best way to avoid death on a motorcycle and you're not going to want to hear this it's a little controversial because i see comments about this all the time don't speed uh, I have been known to speed a lot on my motorcycles before, but you gotta pick the time and the place because speed will kill. And I don't care what people say about, oh, stopping suddenly kills you, speed doesn't kill anyone. Speed kills, guys. If you're traveling faster than you should be traveling, you're increasing your closing distances. Whenever you do impact an object at 100 miles per hour versus 50 miles per hour, it's gonna hurt a whole lot worse. You're gonna have these crazy rotational torsion forces on your body. You're gonna fly off your bike and spin around. You're gonna add a bunch of G-forces to your head. Doesn't matter what kind of gear you're wearing, the speed will definitely hurt and kill you so given an equal reaction time speed is just going to increase that distance is going to have you come to a stop or the force that's going to impact into your body when you do impact something like i said hitting an object at 100 versus hitting it at 50 is going to be a massive difference because it exponentially gets worse the faster you go and as i mentioned i've sped a bunch on my motorcycles but you have to pick the time and the place and ultimately take it to the track if you want to go fast i know i sound like you're super protective uncle or your dad or whatever but honest guys if you want to speed you got to pick the right place the right moment you got to have wide open visibility you should absolutely not be speeding in certain conditions we're going to talk about coming up in this video later as well pick a nice open on-ramp for a highway you know pick a nice open road maybe you have a favorite twisty road that's nice and clear you've scouted it out a couple times then sure go ahead amp up the speed a little bit have some fun but ultimately keep it within check i really don't recommend doing speeds of above 120 130 140 miles per hour on the road unless you really know what you're doing and you really have the location scouted out because the consequences can be very dire for going those kinds of speeds you know you see a lot of guys on youtube and instagram and tiktok flying between cars going 140 miles per hour that kind of stuff is supremely dangerous um and will absolutely cause life-altering injury or death i don't think we need to discuss the types of riders that are doing those kind of things we see on youtube and tiktok and instagram where they're filtering between cars and going really fast it's genuinely not a very good idea on top of that if you get caught going 140 150 you're gonna go to jail lose your license uh, have some very very bad personal problems as opposed to just your uh, health problems that could arise Time is running out to win these amazing giveaway motorcycles. And for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, I'm doing something special. We're gonna give you 50X entries to win any of these motorcycles for every dollar you spend. That means if you buy a $100 helmet, you are gonna get 5,000 entries to win one of these motorcycles. We have the ZX4RR, the XSR900, the almighty Kawasaki H2, and the Ninja 400 all up for grabs. Time is running out on these giveaways over here. You only have until Black Friday and Cyber Monday specials and to make sure you got your chances locked and loaded. So why don't you head over to yamanube.co, pick out your favorite product, select the sweepstakes you want and get 50x entries to win.
don't delay. Now I mentioned not speeding in particular locations. The number one location you should avoid if you don't want to die on your motorcycle are intersections. I know that we have to deal with them if we're getting out of town or doing that sort of thing, but statistically speaking, intersections are one of the deadliest places because so many things are happening in them, right? People are turning left, they're turning right, they're going straight through, they're running red lights. They're a very dangerous place to be on a motorcycle, and I would say approach every intersection with caution. Every intersection I go through, even if I've got the green, I've got it wide open, I always slow down a little bit just because you never know who's just going to blast through a red light or who's just going to decide to turn left or turn right. And I'd much rather be going 30 and having my front brake covered over an intersection than flying through at wide open throttle on an intersection. It does not matter if you have the right of way. The might is right when it comes to traffic. And if there's a big vehicle that's about to collide with you, doesn't matter if you have the right way. You want to make sure that you're avoiding intersections as much as possible on your motorcycle. And if you have to deal with them, then deal with them with the utmost caution because that is a high risk area. Think about going up to intersections as a very high risk area. So if you're not speeding, you're covering your front brake and you're treating intersections with respect, you're already massively ahead of the game when it comes to not dying on your motorcycles. But I've got a couple more tips for you guys here that you're definitely going to want to hear about. This one might sound like the most absolute common sense piece of advice ever, but hear me out because I do see a lot of riders not doing this and I actually have a fun story for you guys. Wear a helmet and wear all the rest of your appropriate gear, but my God, wear a helmet. It doesn't make any sense to ride a motorcycle without a helmet. The number one way of preventing a TBI or a life altering injury or death is to wear a helmet because a small bonk on the head will cause serious problems. When I was younger and in the third grade, I knew a young boy who was riding his scooter around the neighborhood and he actually went down on his scooter, just had a little oopsie kind of crashed or whatever, did something and he kind of went off and supposedly he hit his temple on the side of a curb and he died. That's how little it takes to have a life-altering injury or death when it comes to head injuries. It is super important to wear a helmet, especially riding a motorcycle where if you come off the thing and you bonk your head at speed, it is not gonna be pretty. Also, wearing the rest of your gear can actually save your life as well too. You can very easily bleed out at the side of an accident in a matter of minutes if you weren't wearing the right set of gear. Lacerations can happen, you can have limbs come off, all kinds of crazy stuff. And again, it's not to say that the gear is going to prevent any type of accident, especially if you're piling on a ton of speed, no gear is gonna save you from 150 mile per hour, come off the bike. You're probably gonna have a really bad time if that happens, but at the same time, wearing the most amount of gear possible is going to prevent other life altering or deadly injuries. Okay, this next one, I think, Again, should go without saying, but you look at the statistics and you see certain things. And like I said, I want to tell a bit of a funny story in this one. Don't drink and ride. It's a terrible idea to mix alcohol and motorcycling. They do not go together. They are not like peanut butter and jelly. They are not like those kind of things. They are not something that you should mix ever. And also riding impaired in general, right? If you're highly emotional, if you are, you know, in a state where you just took some, a lot of prescription drugs or you mistook your prescription drugs or you're experimenting with different drugs. I don't really condone drug use, but do whatever you want to do. It's a free country. I don't think you should mix those kind of substances and motorcycling together. Motorcycles require a high level of awareness and skill and ability to ride and operate correctly. And even in the best of circumstances, when you're highly alert, stuff can happen. If you are operating at a much, much lower level of awareness and of ability, you're not gonna have a good time on your bike. I made the very bad mistake one time of having a couple of beers and then jumping on my motorcycle. And I realized very quickly that it was not a good idea to be even a little tipsy and trying to ride a bike. The forces and the leaning and all that, man, it was a terrible, terrible idea. And I only did it the one time and realized it was terrible to do. So the funny story I was going to tell you is I was behind a big group of Harleys the other day and they just came out of a bar and I was in my car way behind them and I saw them all pull out and I saw the guy at the back no helmet, dragging his rear brake everywhere, really kind of odd riding, odd handling. He went to go take a left-hand turn and kind of drifted out way, way, way wide. And I was like, he's going to crash. He's obviously riding drunk. And he just saved it by the skin of his teeth. But I saw this guy wobbling all the way back to where he was going. And he probably thought he was riding like a great rider. 
Um, so please don't mix alcohol and motorcycling. That is a great way to uh, ensure yourself to have a deadly injury if you do mix those. Another thing I wanted to talk about is that single vehicle accidents on windy, twisty roads are the number one type of accident that motorcyclists have. Motorcyclists often vastly overestimate their abilities, and you see riders running wide on twisty roads or low siding their motorcycles and causing too much lean angle. Uh, this is the most common accident, so if you approach a twisty road with respect and ride within your limits, you're going to massively be in a better position. And you might say, oh, we can, but I could just, I'll just slide out on that road, it's no big deal, I'm probably not gonna die. The thing is, if you impact an object while you're sliding with a weird rotation or a weird situation, it really doesn't take much to have a very nasty injury on a motorcycle. And I want to caution you guys about this because I'm not trying to fear monger you, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm trying to tell you the realities of riding these things and how you don't want to do it because the consequences can be very severe. When I was a younger rider, I didn't quite understand how severe some of the consequences could be when you're riding these things, but now I've lived and proved the tale of how bad things can get when things go pretty bad, and now I take it mostly to the track. So if you're out there on twisty roads and you're just having fun bombing around with your friends, just realize that that is the likeliest place for you to crash as a motorcyclist. But I did want to clue you in on another very instrumental statistic is that the majority of motorcycle accidents that lead to death are older riders in their 40s, they're impaired by alcohol and not wearing helmets and riding at night. So if you're not doing any of these things, if you are wearing a helmet and you're not impaired by alcohol and you're riding during the day and you're not over 40 or you have more motorcycle training, um, you are already way above the statistic of people who die on a motorcycle, but that doesn't mean you should stay complacent. So again, I really think you need to be covering and learning how to use your front brake. Don't be speeding too much, as going faster on a motorcycle will cause bad outcomes. Avoid intersections as much as possible, and if you do go through them, just go through them nice and easy, take it slow, and kind of observe all of your surroundings. Wear a helmet especially, and also wear all of your gear. Don't drink any alcohol and ride the bike. And when you're on a twisty road, be cautious that that is the riskiest place for you to be on your motorcycle. If you think about all these things when you're on your bike, you're surely going to have a much better time riding and you're probably going to avoid injury and death. So I hope these tips helped you. If you have any other comments or questions, let me know down below. If you have any other tips that you'd like to impart on the riders, let me know in the comments down below. I treat my comment section kind of a bit of an open forum, a nice discussion place for the community. And if you want to join the community, go to yamminoob.co, sign up and become a member. I do a weekly live stream where I take calls from people, hang out with people, talk about motorcycling, talk about news, and just enjoy our time on two wheels. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Watch it, Gabby, no!